Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid back yet very inspiring conversations with other full time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts. And if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. This week's episode features Arizona-based muralist Rich Marks. I met Rich through this month's January paint challenge, 31 paintings in 31 days. And if you follow me on any kind of social media, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But Rich had heard about this challenge and started tagging me in his daily posts. And it didn't take long for me to notice what an experienced painter he was. This guy is so good. There were so many days where I would see his work and I would take my phone and literally show my fiance Ryan like, look at this guy who's participating in the challenge. He's so good. And of course, Ryan would nod like, yes, yes, he's good. That's awesome. (laughs) So not long ago, I messaged him and asked, hey, have you ever thought about teaching? And long story short, he's going to be a contributor to the Artist Academy very soon, which I am so excited about. This guy is so good, and I think every, all, every one of us could learn a thing or two from him. Also, I want to mention that I did not know that Rich and I had worked for the same company at the same time, only at different locations at one point, until he mentioned it mid interview. You can hear the shock in my voice when I realized that this art world is actually so small. (laughs) Rich is full of helpful tips for aspiring and advanced artists, but my favorite quote from him during this interview is, you cannot network enough. Ah, so true. (laughs) So sit back, get comfy, and let me know what you think about this week's episode with Rich Marks. So if you just want to kind of tell a little bit of background story on how you became such a great painter and kind of like your, basically what brought you into uh, the space you are now. Well, um, I started out, uh, I went to school and I got a degree, bachelor's degree in commercial art. Is what they called it back then because I didn't know if I could make it as a fine artist. So I thought, if I do commercial art, then I could do logos, uh, design work, and I would always have work. I could work for a company. Um, so I did that, and then I realized, you know, I didn't have the skills I really needed to do what I wanted to do. So I went back to school, and I got an associate's degree in desktop publishing, which taught me Photoshop, um, Illustrator, Quark, and design, all those things. And then... Um, While I was in school, one of my instructors was quitting because she got a job in Steamboat Springs at an ad agency, and she told me, I'll bring you up when you graduate. So I was like, are you kidding me? This is like dream come true. You're in school, and then you get out of job right after you get out. So um, I did, and she did, and then I went up there, uh, started as just a paste-up guy where I was – they basically did magazine design. Ah. So I um, 
I was the guy that did all the typesetting and I pasted all the pictures on this board and got it ready to go to the printer. And then as the years went by, I just slowly worked my way up to actually, unfortunately, taking her position as creative director, um, which was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really try to do that, but it just yeah. happened. Yeah. And um, worked there for a while, but all the, all the, during that time I was doing, uh, you know, magazine designs and logos and brochures and things, I was still doing fine art on the side. And that was really where my passion was, even though, you know, I loved having the nine to five and having a paycheck every week. I, it just wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then um, I met a, a guy through the magazine who knew another guy who was doing um, sports lithographs. So he saw a picture I had done of the San Francisco 49er, and he was like, hey, would you like to try this out? So I said, sure. I submitted some of my work, and he said, wow, this is really good. Would you like to do my next project? And I said, oh, absolutely. And so I did this painting of the Fierce and Foursome, um, which is a Los Angeles Rams team from the, I think they were the 60s. And um, so they flew me out to Los Angeles, and we signed the prints. They signed the prints, and then we sold them. And then I did a few more projects with him, and I was thinking, you know what? I could probably do this on my own. So I partnered up with another guy. And remember, during all this time, I'm still doing the magazines, and I'm just still <laughs> doing this on the side. Um, and then we, um, we started doing it on our own, and, and we started, you know, contacting with uh, sports, you know, the guys. Like in that day, it was John Elway and Joe Montana um, were the, the big names. Um, Tom Brady was just coming on the scene. And that, that worked out really well for me, so well, in fact, that um, some galleries that I was trying to get in realized what I was doing, and they finally accepted me, only because they saw what I was doing after I had tried to get in them for a couple of years and kept getting these decline letters, um, which, you know, that in itself can wear on you as an artist, just getting, you know, rejected all the time and start to... <laughs> So I could guess yourself, hey, am I good enough for this? Um, yeah. What do I need to do to improve? But I'm the type of guy that if I do get one of those, it just makes me work harder and, and want to be better. Um, so I was, like, just so stoked that they were like, yeah, let's, let's give your art a try. So the lithograph thing led to galleries, and then I was in galleries for oh, maybe two, three years. But then um, I started to become disillusioned with those because I was realizing that, they weren't paying me in a very timely manner. And they kept asking me for paintings, and I would always give them paintings. But it just didn't seem like, you know, they would always take 50 to 60% of, of what we were selling them for, mm. you know, stringing me out 30, 60, 90 days. So I was like, you know what? I don't think I like this very much either. So I decided just to, to try it on my own. So I, I took the plunge and went for it. But I, I, I said I took a plunge. I was still working at the magazine, so it wasn't like I was too risky with everything. And then the magazines um, let me go because they were sold out. Uh, they sold to a company in Portland who just came in and cleaned house completely and brought in their own people. So that was the moment that forced me to do it full time on my own. I had no other choice, really. Oh, wow. So it was like almost a push into the art world. Like a, it was a, push. a slight, it's not even like a little nudge. It's like, okay, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, it's, it's good that you had a lot of, I mean, some experience. Like you kind of knew that like galleries were, they were good, but maybe not for you. And then you like some experience working with clients. And so you had some experience up until then. So have you been a full-time artist ever since you got the push to go to be it? So I have, I had that happen in 2010 and um, yeah, it just kind of, it was slow at first and we were struggling a little bit, but you hit it on the, the nail on the head is I was used to dealing with, with clients all the time, and I did have some contacts through the magazines and through the galleries. So obviously I hit all those first just to see what I could get work-wise. Yeah. And then I decided I would try this uh, thing called Thumbtack. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Mm -mm. It, it's an online uh, deal where you set up a profile, 
and you say all the skills that you're good at, and those are the key words that if somebody like wants a plumber and you had checked off plumber, then you'll get an alert on your phone saying, hey, this person needs this job done. Do you want to bid on it? But obviously all mine were art and design. So I started getting a lot of work through that, and that kind of kept us afloat during the lean times. It's a pretty amazing thing, actually. <laughs> the Internet is amazing. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's the reason we're talking right now. So it's yes. Thumbtack. Is that still a way for you to get jobs? Yes. Okay, yes. everybody write that down. Is it Thumbtack.com? <laughs> Absolutely. And what you do in Thumbtack is you set the parameters of, like, what – What's your radius of how far will you travel? What kind of work will you do? And then on your profile page, you set up, you just put all your work. So basically, it's like having an agent that only gets paid if you get the job. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. So you, you kind of, you set your own rates too, or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh. That, that, when you bid on the job, that's when you say, hey, I can do that mural for X amount. Oh, okay. Huh. Awesome. Okay, and what? You gotta what's... try it. Add it, add it to what you're doing. It, okay. You have time. You're so busy. I know. I, yeah. I, I still might though, just to like, just to see. And if anything, I'll just contract it out. But yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do that. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna write that down here in a second. But um, okay. So thumbtack. And what, what state are you in? I'm in Arizona. Arizona. But okay. I have a. a... Profile page set up for Colorado as well. That's where I'm from originally. Oh. And I still have a lot of clients there. So I kind of do both. make a lot of trips to Colorado to do work through Thumbtack. Okay. Yeah, that, that's actually really smart, too, because, like, I'm in Springfield, Missouri, and there's just not a whole lot around here. However, I have family in, like, Kansas City, and so I, when I'm making my profile, like, I'll probably set it to here, but I'll also set it there to you. Kansas City. And so anybody who's watching who is also setting your profile, kind of think like that. Like, be like, okay, I have really good friends that I could probably stay with for a week, you know, in this place place in this place so if you're willing to drive i would say to work uh, i mean that's like i think that's so 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 smart that uh, that, you, that you do that i agree with that and the thing about it is it is competitive because you're bidding against other professional artists but the thing that will get you an advantage is to have a really good works for your examples and then Get reviews. Always ask your clients for reviews, yeah. and the reviews go a long way to get you work. Okay, so do they review on Thumbtack, or you can submit? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so they have to do it. You can't submit one. Yeah. No, when you're done with the job, you just click this button on their, their website that says that you're asking for a review. Then they'll send you a review. But, man, those really go such a long way because people want to know they can trust you when they're bringing you into their house or their business and want to know that you did a good job. So true. That's so smart, too. Because, I mean, whenever I go to, you know, find a restaurant or do anything, I go straight to the reviews on Amazon before I buy any pair of clothing or anything. I'm like, yeah. okay, what are other people saying of it? So that's so smart. And I think that that's just a really good point. I love all of this. Thumbtack and get reviews because I think a lot of us don't even think about it like that. Like, we kind of think, like, We'll just post social media and stuff, but, like, having other people leave a review is so smart. We had a comment, Mary Evelyn. She's a, um, she's a artist from Branson here, which is really close to me. She said, wow, just looked at your work. Stunning. And she asked what your okay. primary medium was. She was asking if it was watercolor. That's what I enjoy the most. Um, okay. The things I've been posting on the 31-day challenge have been – I think I did 12 watercolors so far and eight uh, acrylics slash latex. Sometimes I'll just go with regular house paint on canvas. Yeah. That's what I use for murals, and I'm, I'm just so used to working in that. It, it, it reacts pretty much like acrylic. Okay. I gotcha. A little less rubbery feeling. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, um, let's see. What makes up your typical work day? How many hours do you usually spend painting? I know that through the 31-day challenge, you will usually say what, how many hours you spent on it, which I think I love, or I love. Like, I don't think I love. I know I love it because I just see to, like, I, I like to see how, like, I just like to know, like, how many hours people spend on certain things. And I also think that just goes into your experience. If you spend a couple hours on something and it looks pretty dang good, I'm like, man. <laughs> 
That, that's a big thank you to Bass Pro and Cabela's right there because um, I used to work do work for them, and I know you did too, but oh. we never crossed paths. Um, oh my it's so goodness. crazy that we never did. But, yes. Um, it's because of working for them that I got to be fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know how that is. I don't have to tell yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah, I so yeah. Let's let's talk about that for a second. But yeah, okay. I actually I say that all the time too. I was like, you know, Bass Pro they hire you, they want you to be good, but they want you to be fast. <laughs> like, and so working around all the other artists like that. I wonder if we did you work around like Dave Reiser or Melvin Lovejoy or um, Dave? Yes, not Melvin. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. B. 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 Worked with B. Oh, Oh my um, gosh. Chris. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name of another guy, but I learned a ton from them. <laughs> Me um, too. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. And they were really cool, but you're so right. I mean, you, you go in there and you look at this place and it's like, oh my goodness, it's like overwhelming seeing all the bare walls and some of them are like 120 feet wide by 20 feet tall. And you're thinking, how am I going to get that done? And so you just kind of develop a method of doing it in your style and working quick. Yeah, definitely. So that that's that's how I got to start to work pretty fast. You yeah. Know, can, like these ones I'm doing uh, for your challenge, I'm trying to keep them under four hours. And a lot of times I'm my own worst enemy because I want to keep tweaking and tweaking it. And I'm <laughs> like, and I just got to stop it because I have other work that I have to do too. So. <laughs> But that's one of the reasons I even I even said that one of my comments to you was that I love this challenge because it's helping me to even work faster and that just to see things in light and dark and and just tones and values and and, it, and when you're working fast sometimes you just get a better spontaneous looking painting. Yeah. Yeah, true. And sometimes I like think. things just kind of work out too. You're like, oh, I just kind of made one little mark there and it kind of works. So I'm going to try to leave yeah. it alone. But yeah, yeah I, alone. I love that you say that you're even you are benefiting from it just because you've, you know, you've worked for Bass Pro, you've done all of this and you're still benefiting from the 31 day challenge. I say that too. I still benefit from it too. Yeah. And so if anybody's thinking about like possibly joining on to our next challenge or whatever, I highly encourage it because I, I just I love hearing the confirmation from you too because I feel felt so honored, really, that somebody at your skill level was doing this with us. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and to hear that wow. you're benefiting from it as well, I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. <laughs> so I'm so glad yeah. it brought us together, kind of. Yeah, me too, totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think as an artist, you can never get to a point where you think you know everything and you think you've arrived because – you can always grow and you can always improve. And, you know, I, I just feel for me, I have so far to go. Yeah. And I haven't even gotten close to where I want to go as far as the level of the work and the clients that I want to get and just all of that. Yeah, so true. And I think it was on a, uh, working for a Bass Pro. We were in Florida or something, and I was talking to one of the artists there, P Pietro. He kind of came on yeah, a little bit. Pietro, I worked with him. Oh, my God. I love it. That's so funny. What? Um, anyway, um, so I was talking to Pietro about it, and I was like, and I went up to him. I was like, Hey, you know, I'm still learning. Like, I would. Can you show me how to do this? He and he looks at me like dead face, and he's like, We're all still learning, honey. I was like, Oh, <laughs> and you know, Pietro is yeah. sixty maybe, and I'm like, yeah. Wow, oh, yeah. wow, like yeah, you're still that saying crazy? that, but yeah, just and just keeping that mindset yeah. of a student into you know, we don't know everything, even because I think artists as well. A lot of people will be like, I am so good at this. I am the best artist in the room, and I'm like, you're only hurting yourself. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, no one's gonna want to work with you if you're if you're acting like a prima donna. I know. Like and people can sense it too if they think that you're if someone thinks they're better than you it's like uh, um, what yeah. what were the years that you worked for Bass Pro like two thousand it was short for Bass Pro I, I did Cabela's I think uh, two thousand fourteen and fifteen okay and then Bass Pro fifteen and sixteen and and I, I remember your name dropped and Emily's name was dropped one yeah. time I think it was Pietro that you guys were maybe going to come, they were going to call you to come out to the San Jose project or the Sacramento. Oh, room. yes. And okay. you didn't, but someone else that we both know, Libby did. Yes. And so I got to work with Libby in San Jose. 
Wow, I feel like you're yeah. yeah, I feel like you're part of the Bass Pro family. Like so yeah. that's yeah. so fun. Oh, Definitely. I had no idea about that. Oh cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we were in Longton, uh, New Brunswick, Canada, while well, you guys were in San Jose, I think. Oh, and so, yeah, I wish I would have gone to that one. I think everybody thinks that they, they should have, or which is they would have gone to the other one, because, like, yeah, we had, like, mountains and stuff, but you guys had, like, sunshine and, like, Yeah, and ocean. And ocean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. That's so amazing. Um, could you talk us a little bit through your painting process? Any kind of methods or techniques that you've, used, that you've learned throughout the years? Um, as far as murals, since we're talking about Bass Pro, um, I've kind of developed a method that I like to use where I will, actually this is what I do with everything, is I start in my computer, and hmm. because I'm pretty proficient in Photoshop, I lay everything out in the computer, um, I'll research several photos, I'll, I'll put them together in Photoshop, I'll take out what I don't like, add what I want, and make this scene. From that, I'll do a sketch of the scene and kind of work out the colors. And then from that, I'll project my sketch onto the wall and then start painting. And then when I paint, I typically go darkest to lightest and then start foreground and work my way. I mean, background to foreground. Okay, yeah. And it sounds really simple to okay. say mm -hmm. it that way, but it, it works really quickly. And I think it looks good when you start with the shadows and then lay all your colors over that. I think yeah. you get a nice um, textury depth thing going on when you do that. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and it is simple, but it works. And yeah. are, so are you one of those artists, I've noticed with like interviewing artists or just watching them on Instagram and stuff, there are some artists who will do like an underlayer and do like a block in of everything. And there are some artists who will work from like left to right and will not, you know, like will not do a block in at all. What do you? Uh, yeah, kind of weird. Um, sometimes I'll do a block in, but most of the time I will do the whole sketch, do the sky and do the clouds. And then I just kind of pick a spot and I work my way out from that spot. Okay. Yeah. I, I know that's not real conventional and, and I think most people block in, but because I've worked oh. out all of the details on the computer and in my mm. sketch, I kind of know what I want. I, I'm the kind of person I want to be very prepared when I get to a job, and I want to go into it with confidence, and, and that, you know, the, the client sees that, and they like that, and then they, they trust you when they feel like you're confident with what you're doing. So because I've worked it all out in the computer, then that enables me to pick a spot and then work out. Good, good. Yeah, and I'm sure the client really likes to see your computer sketch or your computer mock-up first, well, too. Do. Oh, hi, they bud. Do that. And that's a good point because I uh, – will show them, like, say I go to a, have the first meeting with a client for a mural, and they're like, I want this wall painted. So I take a picture of that wall, and then I take whatever I created in Photoshop, and I superimpose that on that wall. So I show them exactly how it's going to look in the lighting of that wall. So there's nothing to chance. They know exactly how it's going to look. Oh, I bet that sa it saves for a lot of redos. I bet you never get a hardly a redo, you know? That's a well, I'd like to say no, but oh. sometimes. <laughs> It's rare. It's my own doing when I do have to do a redo because um, I saw one of your questions was, what's one thing that maybe, what, what exactly was the question? Um, uh, maybe an art lesson that you learned the hard way? Yes, the hard way. That's it. That That is one of the things that I've done in the past. Uh, I think it was one time for a Bass Pro store where I had this limited amount of time and I knew I should have done some things that I didn't do and I was rushing my way through it and I had to go back and do a redo because I just, I, sh I knew better. It just, I knew in my, in my mind that I should have put the detail in where I should have and spent a little extra time. But I said, no, nah, yeah, that's good enough. And I, and I went on to the next one and they're like, oh, well, we kind of want you to redo this. So oh. that was a hard lesson, but a good one. Yeah, for sure. You never cut corners, never cut corners in your painting and never like rush it. Yeah, true. Yeah, and I know, so with my experience with working with Bass Pro, too, is, like, they want you to redo a lot of things, and, like, we'll move things and stuff. Was that kind of your experience, too? They're hardcore sometimes. <laughs> I know. I mean, it trains you for the real world. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is. One time, um, this one I remember, because uh, they wanted me to do this log cabin in this mountain valley, 
but the log cabin was in the foreground and huge. And so I told Joe, I was like, why don't we just have them build a log cabin facade yeah. and not have me paint it? He's like, no, 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 they, they want you to paint it. So I did it, and this was like a 40-foot wide mural by 20-foot tall. Sure enough, I get it finished, and they're like, well, we're <laughs> going to do a facade. So they totally, like, built this cabin over my painting. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, totally then, and then, of course, yeah. B's like, you know, welcome to Bass Pro. Now you're officially a Bass Pro artist. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people that those little kinds of stories. And I say it super lighthearted because, like, I'm not offended by it, you know. It's just kind of a funny – it's almost got me used to, like, now if somebody wants a redo, I'm like, okay, sure. Like, this is just yeah. – it makes you kind of be less attached to your art, kind of. You yeah, know. You, you can't get attached to it, although sometimes I still do. I mean, mm. because, yeah. you know, it's, it's part of you that you pour out into every painting, and you can't help that because yeah. it's – your style is always going to come across, and every artist has their own style, and that's a lot to do with things you've been through in your life, people you've met, artists you've studied, uh, jobs you've had, circumstances, all these things, you know, create your style. Yeah. And so it's hard not to get attached sometimes. I mean, even to this day, I, I try not to, and I say I'm not, but sometimes a little bit of me does. Yeah, very same, too. I just have to, like, remind myself of, like, what I just said. But, yeah, I totally agree. And I think everybody listening, to will definitely agree with you. They're like, no, that's that's something I created, you know. Be, I'm yeah. proud of it. You be proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. We had a question. Uh, somebody says, since you mentioned your sketches, uh, do you charge for your sketches? What if you put effort on a pre preliminary design that the client doesn't like and give up to pay for, or or give up? Okay, so what if you, you what if you make a sketch and they say they never mind? They don't like the sketch. Um, I don't charge for sketches typically unless I know that this client is going to be trouble. <laughs> and it's going to be super picky. How do you I'm know? Usually, How do you know? I was going to say, usually I don't know that unless I've worked <laughs> okay. for them before. Yeah. Then I might factor that in, but, you know, 95% of the time, no, I don't. I don't like to nickel and dime my clients. Mm -hmm. I set my price based on what I know I'm going to put into it, either hourly or square foot wise. And so because I've done it for a while, I know what it's going to take, and, and depending on the detail also, so, you know, I always throw that in, um, however many sketches they want. And I've, I've, it's rare that they'll have me redo a sketch. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you take a deposit? I do. 50% up front and 50% okay. when I'm done. Smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's a good question because I've been burned. Uh, we've, someone, all been, we've all been burned. Oh, yeah. We've all been burned. <laughs> you know, I have yeah. such – I'm so bad about it, too. Like, I have such a Midwest, like – everybody's so friendly like thing i'm like okay a handshake like i all the time i'll forget to send a contract or i'm like eh, they're a nice person <laughs> or like and there's sometimes i'm like eh, it's okay to just pay me after blah, blah, blah. and like rarely very rarely does it bite me in the butt but it has and so yeah i i need to get better about that <laughs> yeah um, and i don't always do a contract i mean i do on the really big jobs but yeah. because you've done the 50 percent up front they're committed and um, it's rare that they won't pay when you're done. Okay, yeah, it's very true. I've very always true. thought if they don't pay when I'm done, I'm just going to go whitewash the whole thing. <laughs> true, yeah, <laughs> and I always tell people too, like, it, like a contract – a contract basically serves as like a, you know, we expect this, you know, to do this, blah, blah, blah. But like emails back and forth can serve as just as much as a contract, you know, yeah, like and you can, you can always take Good some point. of the small, small claims court. And I've never mm -hmm. had to do that, but I have threatened to do it and which I would have, and they yeah. ended up paying, but whatever. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I will do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah never had to either, fortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody asked, do you charge more for redos? Ooh, you know, I never have. A, again, that would depend on if it's a troublesome client. Um, usually they're, they're just like, oh, we love it, but I was thinking maybe could you add this or whatever. Yeah. If it's way out of the scope of the original bid, yeah, I'll charge. But if it's a little thing, I just like to go that extra mile, and that, that stays with them. That, that leaves a good taste in their mouth, and you're, you're more likely to get referrals 
because you went that extra step and make more money with the referral than you would by charging for that little extra. Yeah, so true. So true. Like the, yeah. leaving the customer with a I love it like response yeah. will get you so much business because they're going to talk about it. They're going to talk about it to their friends, mm -hmm. to their neighbors, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and you got to think big picture all the time. It's not mm -hmm. only about that one job. You got to think about what you might get from the one you're doing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but let's see. Is there something you don't like to paint without? Music. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like when I paint and that's what I love about what I do is I'll just go into a place and I'm going to do a mural and now I'm going to be there for a month or whatever and every day I just come in whenever I come in and then I just put on my music and I'm like in my own world just doing my thing and it's it's almost therapeutic to me I love it yeah it's it the is. best it really if, is if, you're, if you want to do a career in art I highly recommend it yeah. So fulfilling. I love it. So true. Um, do you have a favorite past project? Oh, yeah. I've been thinking about this one. Um, maybe one of the ones that I like a lot that I did last year uh, was this huge mural project uh, for this guy in Scottsdale, and I worked with Mural Joe. I was going to ask about him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mural Joe is awesome. He's so awesome, and, he, and he's just like he is in the videos. He's super informative, and and he's amazing, um, not just an amazing artist, but he's got an amazing memory, and that's what makes him such a good artist because he can, like, look at – it's almost like photographic memory. He can look at something and then remember how it looked. Um, case in point, we were working on that huge mural as – told you about in Scottsdale and, he's, and he was working on this part with a lot of rocks and he's like you know what I think I'm just going to throw a rabbit in there he busts out in like a half hour this amazing looking rabbit head without looking at anything and it looked real oh wow so that's what I, I asked him how are you doing that and, and then he told me about his memory and how he just is able to do that oh my gosh he's making the rest of us look bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and here I am with my computer looking at it really close oh, and all my same. photos <laughs> He's just going off of his memory. Oh, it's how crazy. cool. Oh, man. Yeah. God. So, so that was one of my favorites, working with him for sure, because he is so good and knowledgeable and so nice. And he'll just stop at any point and show you what he's doing and how he's doing it. And Yeah, that was that was a good project. Oh, wow. He, he is so meant to be uh, an art teacher, YouTuber, then, that yeah. sounds like. He is. He yeah. is. And, and that's how um, I, I got to work with him because one time I just uh, emailed him, hey, you know, how do you do this, this, and this out of the blue? And he answered. And then so when this job came up and I knew I needed other artists to work with me, it's like, yeah, let's give, let's give him a call. Where and is he, he located? For it. He's in Flagstaff, which isn't, you know, it's about two hours from me. Oh, okay, okay. So that worked out. That was perfect. Yeah. I actually got a mural. Somebody asked for a mural job. A while ago and it was in Arizona and I was like I I you'd have to be travel and hotel and stuff but now that I know you guys <laughs> I'm <laughs> gonna go. be like hey guys I have a mural job you want to come and hang out and like yeah just come. okay go. it's good totally. to, it's good to network and know all these people all these just yes. like you and mural mural Joe I love that so perfect mural Joe <laughs> isn't that awesome yeah He's got a great name he does <laughs> Oh, so, okay, so what are your future art plans and goals? Uh, do you have any upcoming projects after the 31-day challenge? What are you working on right now? Well, definitely going to take on your 100-day challenge. Yes, sure. yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> because I want to stay in that groove. And, and it's, I almost paint every day anyway, but I, I just want to do it just for the discipline of the whole thing and, and to be able to work quick again. Yeah. Um, but this year, I think I want to definitely work with more artists. Um, last year, like I was saying, I got to work with Mural Joe, got to work with uh, Aaron Larwick, got to work with Gary Gomez. These are other muralists. And I just find that when I work with other people, I learn so much. And then the networking aspect of it. And then so we're all like already working together. And then, you know, Gary will say, hey, Rich, I'm booked right now. And I got this other mural job I can't handle. Do you want to go do it? And I'm like, sure. So you cannot network enough. 
<laughs> so true. I love that you say that. Everybody, just stick that in your brain. You cannot network enough. Like I just, yeah. I'm gonna put that on a on an Instagram caption probably today. You cannot <laughs> network enough, and I'm gonna quote it and quote you on it because I'm so <laughs> agree. Like there's so many times, like even especially last year, and I was like, I was super busy, and I was like. If Emily or um, Meg or anybody like, I'm like, can you do this? Can you do this? And it's just because I I know you, and I mean, you don't have to be best friends with someone, but you do have to like, you know, just establish some kind of relationship with them. And it's just and working on a project together, I'm like for hours every day is a really good way to establish a, a relationship with someone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they can't go anywhere, neither can you. So you're set there together. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> But it's all good. I mean, that that's exactly how I came to find out about you. Um, was your friend, Emily, oh. in a roundabout way, because I was on um, Instagram looking at other muralists because I have several big projects coming up this year, and I was just trying to see who was out there doing scenics and things, and then I came across her and, and reached out to her. She said she could, and then I saw that, she was following you, so then I looked at your stuff, and then that's kind of how I got to know about your 31-day challenge and you. Oh, cool. Okay. So the networking thing. It is. It's the networking, like, know a friend who knows a friend. Well, I'm so yeah. glad that we got to make that connection. Have you actually met Emily yet? Uh, just on the phone. Oh, my gosh. She is such a sweetheart. I love working with her. Mm -hmm. She's like – and we're, we're just kind of two of a kind, too. We're just like – Super happy and like it's just it makes it so much more fun working with her. So I hope you get a chance to work with her. She's pretty great. Yeah, me too. Me too. I might bring you into something. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> but you're a busy girl. You're you got your wedding coming up. And I know. Yeah, like but you always after, have work. I know. Yeah, but after after March, I think I'll. If you have anything after March, I would love to join you guys. Um, okay. It's I notice like in summer it'll get it'll get really crazy. And then towards the end of the year, but then like like right now, it's not too bad. And I'm not I'm not complaining about not having not being booked out, you know, sixty days in advance right now. I'm just kind of kind of have a little bit of like a kind of little project a week right now, and it's just nice to be able to breathe, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's why I like this time of year. Um, I used to hate it when I was struggling, but I, I had so much work this summer and this fall that I'm like I'm getting a couple months just to chill and not have to go do a mural or, or a painting and and well, but here I am doing a painting every day for you I know but, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I like it <laughs> good yeah and it's it's this funny like weird kind of thing in your head too because you're like okay I know it's I know it'll probably get busy, busy again but like it's kind of weird not being busy but I should should enjoy it, it but like it's it like this weird, it's like and then when you are busy you're like I kind of miss those days when like I wasn't so busy, but I'm making money. So it's just like this, like back and forth. It's so totally true. And I do that too. And, and I, every time I do it, I kick myself. I'm like, why didn't I just relax and enjoy that? Because it does come. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I haven't done anything in a couple of weeks. Ah, where's the work? I need something. I know. And it's just, yeah, it just goes back to like, uh, just saving is what I do. I just like, yeah. okay, save it. Cause like I made this much this month, but like, I don't know, like next month is not guaranteed, so, yeah, which is just seriously. so different. It's like being a working artist, you have to almost be okay with it as much as you can anyway, with just like not having that steady nine to five of that same paycheck every day. But the, I mean, that's also the joy in it. Like you get some yeah. time off and then you get really busy, but it's what you yes. love. So I'm just, I think yes. it's just kind of funny. <laughs> but I have to relax and enjoy that time off and, and because I always know what does come. And that's another thing I do want to do better this year. Um, I haven't been doing the social media thing for that long. I think I just started Instagram in 2017. And um, I, I just need to get better at that and learn more about how to get my work out there. And that's one thing I want to concentrate on this year. Um, aside from the networking, is just really do the push for the social media um, because you can reach so many people that way. So true. As you are a great example of. Thanks. Yeah. I've been working for on it for a while. I was just looking at my 
the number of posts that I posted and it's like 930 something or whatever. And I'm like, man, that's quite a bit. So I just kind of tell people too, I'm like, you know, if you're growing slow and if you haven't made it yet, just look at the number of posts I made to the number of posts some other people have made and you'll get there. It just takes like, and your work is quality work. So I think as, as people just need to see it and it's just, it's tough. And have you thought, are you on TikTok yet? You know what? I just uh, went on there this week because I think I heard you talking about it. Yeah, I love it. Or maybe <laughs> someone you interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I posted one thing, but um, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that too. For sure. Yeah, I think you would blow up on TikTok. And I'm just going to say, really? if you, if you want to try it, um, a uh, sorry, vertical. Um, I, I always. Um, mistaken vertical for horizontal so i'm like okay. a vertical video that is a time lapse that you can get down to about 10 seconds and you if you put a if you put a good song to it and just go onto like onto tiktok and show like what's trending just put a trending song on it and do a time lapse for 10 seconds of your whole like whole painting and you will blow up on tiktok wow okay. do it. yeah just do Absolutely that yeah do that. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I've already done that wrong. I went on there and did something that was way more than 10 seconds. So oh, yeah. Yeah, it's work. it's all about, like, the number or, like, because people nowadays, especially all kids, are on TikTok. And yeah. so everybody's attention span is, like, show me something cool, like, yeah, really fast. Yeah, but we have we're, – I also tell people, like, we're so lucky. Like, we get to create this super entertaining thing. And it's, like, entertaining to us, but, like, it's really entertaining to everybody yeah. else, especially seeing it happen. So I always yeah. tell people, just do a time lapse and try to cover as much of the screen as possible since it's very vertical. And then I'll also do it to where if you can edit the video to where it, you'll have like a two second just like still frame on your finished painting for about two seconds at the end. That way they can really see what you did and just kind of take that in for a second. And then yeah. some people will rewatch the whole video just to see that two that two second um, frame, which actually is what matters with the algorithm. So like okay. TikTok will continue to push out your stuff if they know people are watching it and if they're rewatching it. Okay, gonna hit TikTok hard. Yeah, for sure. I feel like <laughs> we're gonna talk again in a week, and you're gonna be like, I have twenty thousand followers in a week or something, because wow, it's wow. it's possible. So awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them come over to Instagram, some of them don't. But you know, like you said, we're in this for the long game, and you mm-hmm. know, even if a fi- fifteen or sixteen year old is following you now, a couple of years from now, when they have a job and they can buy a print, <laughs> when they have money, exactly when they have money, they're gonna be a buyer yeah. because they're watching you for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good advice. I'm definitely going to try that. Awesome. Let's see. Um, we have, let's see, Mary Evelyn had a comment on here. Uh, if you if you want more animal portrait to do, start net, networking with the, the accounts that those either have uh, rescue or foster dogs. I found uh, many repeat clients through my IG community. Okay, so maybe, like, go on, like, the, the foster care um Instagram accounts or, or accounts that are like centered around animals and just be like, Hey, like have them promote your art. I think is what she was saying. Uh, And, or do a, or do a cross promotion. Like, Hey, I'll promote your Instagram page if you promote mine. And then the people, yeah. yeah, And they share a painting. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. She, she's like, yeah. Yeah, that th- that sentence was a little kind of messed up, and she just wrote she's like, "Sorry, I did I didn't proofread." <laughs> I was like, I was like, ah, but we we got it, we got it exactly what you're <laughs> yeah. saying. No, that's smart. I mean, anytime you can like, depending on what your subject matter is or what you're going for in your art, if you can target that audience, that's super smart. Yeah, that you. They actually have my mind thinking too of like, I need to go and find some butterfly pages. And be like, hey, I'll share your stuff. You share my stuff. That's, yeah, that's good. Hit, <laughs> Everybody's hit up learning. all the butterfly pavilions all across the country. <laughs> exactly, all of them. <laughs> yeah. um, so one more question right here. I've so enjoyed talking with you. But this last well, question I ask at every artist, it's, if there is there any advice that you would give artists who want to make art their full-time career but don't know where to start? Yes. Um, I would say... It's all going to sound cliches, cliches, but it's true. Work hard. Work very hard. Yeah. Don't be afraid to fail because a lot of people are afraid to fail, but I've had some of my greatest, 
greatest successes from my failures. And then paint all the time. Nobody <laughs> gets good at their craft by not practicing. And uh, art painting is no different. The more you paint, the more you work through problems, the better you're going to get. And the more comfortable you're going to get and the faster you're going to get. Yeah. So those are the three things I'd say. Work hard, paint all the time, and don't be afraid to fail. Definitely. I love it. I love all of those. And that's partially why, why we're doing the 31 day challenge. And then directly after that, the hundred day challenge, paint all the time, listen to rich yes. guys <laughs> and paint all the time. And you can be as good as he is. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, so no, sweet. for sure. No, I so admire your paintings. There's a, there's definitely thank an understanding you. that you have of color and tone and all of that, that I think even I can learn from. And so I'm so excited to see what you can teach us in the artist Academy coming up. Awesome. Well, that yeah. comes painting all the time. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you again so much for coming on, and we will stay in touch for sure. Yes, we will. And thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it very much. No problem. Have a good day. All right. Thanks, Andrea. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step -step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly, <laughs> and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram. So this is a little help me to help you incentive. up. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.